You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Humour in the Bible Book 5 Deuteronomy After the harsh sarcasm we found in Leviticus it's rather nice that the first example of humour in Deuteronomy is much gentler a wry smile and I have to give credit to Rabbi Michael Shekel who pointed this out to me because as we begin the books that the Hebrew Scriptures know as Devarim, words, and the Greek Bible as Deuteronomy or Second Law, whose names themselves suggest that this is a book of reminder and nudges. Rabbi Shekel says, sometimes that extra little push is needed to accomplish something. Is this the tap of encouragement or a slap at procrastination? This question comes to mind as we begin to read this fifth and last book of the Torah. First of all, to recap. We come now to the end of forty years of wandering in the wilderness. On the other side of the Jordan, Moses is addressing the children of Israel. He will spend most of Deuteronomy reviewing what has taken place since the Exodus. And so he begins. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Deuteronomy 1.6 Then the rabbi asks, could it be possible to stay too long at the sight of revelation? The wording that suggests humour here is again a play with words. Because, as Geoffrey Digay in the JPS Torah commentary notes, God's first words in Deuteronomy express impatience, indicating that he was eager for Israel to enter the land immediately. The nearly forty year delay was not God's intention but the result of Israel's failure to trust and obey him. Deuteronomy 1, the end of verse 6 and the beginning of 7 You've stayed long enough at this mountain. Resume your journey. It's quite clear that God is just a touch impatient and is nudging Israel. But the attentive and smart medieval Jewish reader of Scripture, Rashi, had spotted a pun here. The rabbi explains. First of all, he takes the text at its plain meaning. You have stayed long enough. Time to move on. Secondly, Rashi draws on the Midrash Sifre, which sees the long stay in a very positive light. Here's where the pun comes in. The Hebrew for long enough is rav, which also means abundant. The phrase you've stayed long enough can be read as you've received abundantly for being there. Then he quotes Rashi. You have received abundant greatness and reward for having stayed at this mountain. You have made the tabernacle, the menorah, and the ritual utensils. You have received the Torah. You have appointed a Sanhedrin for yourselves, and commanders over thousands, and commanders over hundreds. Let's look at that. God's first words in Deuteronomy are Rav Lachim Shafet Bachal Hazi. Literally, something like big for you camping here on this mountain which can mean you've been camping on this mountain long enough and in view of God's next words resume your journey clearly it does mean that but it could also in another context mean as Rashi noticed it's been a big deal for you camping here on this mountain and it has been for there they had met God made a covenant with the Almighty and received instruction in how to live as Rabbi Michael Shekel asks, why would we want to leave the mountain? Indeed, like Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration in Mark 9.5, after a while listening in as Jesus chatted with Moses and Elijah, the Israelites might well have said, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. God's answer to Peter was to remove the attraction. Moses and Elijah returned to heaven, and Jesus and his disciples descend it to earth. God's response to the Israelites after forty years was just a gentle, if perhaps exasperated, pun. Big for you, camping here on this mountain. Resume your journey. Yet Deuteronomy's first humour is a wry smile. But that does make a nice change after the cutting sarcasm in Leviticus. 
It takes all sorts of humour to make a Bible. See you next time. God bless. And as he does, may he move you on when necessary. And me.